So in the past video, we did something that if that was your first time, it would have been a little confusing for you. So we did um, one to many relationship where one trans where one one uh, QR code will have many transactions. And we went to Laravel documentation and saw one to many and then um, connected the transactions table with the QR code table in that respect. So one QR code had many transactions. We used this and it's under one to many, you see. Then we went to uh, the inverse of one to many, which is many to one, which is uh, many transactions can belong to one QR code. We added it in the transaction table and it worked perfectly. Now there are other, we have to specify other relationships. For instance, first of all, let us um, get the this to be a link. A href, you know the normal way we do links, and then we're gonna do this way. We can make this bold and um, make it bold, and then we we'll close the A href. It's beautiful, beautiful. Now we've done this. We now we now need to actually link uh, to the QR code. So the link is in slash QR codes slash the number the QR code ID so we can do this ID that's one way to link in Laravel just the ID so um, if somebody clicks on this it will go to QR codes then uh, ID let's go and just test it out we're coming here we we'll refresh just to be sure okay so if we click this let's see if it takes, if it takes us to QR code Beautiful. See, it brings us to here where we saw the QR code. Very beautiful. So we can go back to transactions. I'll click on this. And we're good. See, beautiful. So we need to do the same thing with buyer name. So every user has many transactions. The same way. Every transaction belongs to at least, belongs to at most one user. Do you understand the relationship now? A user can have many transactions. But a transaction can only belong to one user. So the same that's the same kind of relationship that we just saw. So we basically go to transactions model and replicate what we just had. So transaction model, a transaction belongs to QR code, but also it also belongs to a user. So we can do user. A user owns the transaction. So we can do models user. Beautiful. Then we go to the um, users table to connect it to transaction but we can just copy what we had here um, according to what we did in QR code a QR code has many transactions which is the same thing with a user a user has many transactions so at the bottom here we will add it and call it transactions a user get transactions for this user a user has many transactions period simple so how do we do that we now come back to the the transactions in our resources we go to transactions folder we go to show fields and then what are we saying here we're looking for this user we want to extend we want to create the username remember the model the function we created is called user because if we go to the transaction look at the function is called user so from this function we can gain access to the user's name and details so we can do this say name this is the name of a field inside the user table. So it will display the user's name. See, let's go check it out. We'll come here and refresh. You see, the name has appeared. But the name is not really as important to me since this is a payment platform. Uh, the name is not really as important as the email. So we can just do name slash email. So I can do name uh, Piper. This Piper is what is above my enter key on my keyboard. You'll see this up, upward arrow. So we'll take it out and then uh, do the same thing here copy paste then we'll change this to email then we'll refresh so if you're building a type of plain payment platform that you want people to be able to um people the the webmasters to pay before they can see their uh, customers email you know how to hide it it's not uh, that difficult all right so um we have name email beautiful now the next thing we can do is the owner name. We can work with this, we can work this out manually too. But there's a way we can do this, but let's do it in the next video.